Hey, Mr. Myers is here. How you doing? Um, I am talking, this is for AP Statistics, I'm talking a little bit about randomizing. So why do we randomize? What do we do when we random, um, randomly select things? And, you know, uh, what's the purpose? Why, you know, why do we, uh, why is it so important to randomize? Which, by the way, is one of the most important things to remember in including uh, when you're doing some statistical stuff is that you randomize. So let's talk about some different ways of randomization. So, you know, a lot of you have talked, a lot of you have heard is, oh, was it randomly selected? Especially if you go, um, if you're in my district, uh, whenever, you know, we're always talking about random selection. And really, is it truly random? And why do we randomly select things? Well, some of you might think, well, why does my teacher randomly select what student to answer this question? Well, you might be thinking, well, because then that way everybody gets, um, you know, because they want to pick on me, you know, or because everybody has an equal chance of getting selected, which often doesn't happen when you, you know, that's not necessarily true depending on the way that you randomize. Um, but really what the purpose of randomly selecting is so that there's no bias in the way you, that you select or that you reduce the amount of bias that you, in, in how you select uh, or what you are selecting because you know humans aren't true they cannot truly randomize they cannot truly randomly select humans just the brain doesn't work that way we always have some sort of inclination or thought that we want to do um, whether you think so or not it's in there and that's called bias that's where the bias comes from so um, there's another cool little video that I've seen on on YouTube that that you know has um, shows you about you know people that you know why people can't randomize um, and, and it shows you some interesting things so I didn't include it on here but uh, just the bottom line here is the reason that the reason that we randomly select is so that we can reduce that bias that we have when we're selecting things and we'll do an activity if you're in my class on actually seeing that come to light so uh, what types of methods would we do well, would we use to randomly select things? Well, here's some ideas to randomly select. Um, and there's some more specific ways of doing this and some specific um, um, techniques. Uh, but for general, this is some things that we can do. We can use a random number table. Now, a random number table is just a table of generated with a bunch of random numbers. Um, here's an example of one that what it looks like. So you've got, you've got a column in rows here. And you can randomly select the column in the row, and you let's say you get four and five, and you go down there, and now you have these random digits. So you just go along, and you use uh, these random digits. So it's just a, a bunch of digits on a piece of paper that were uh, randomly selected, uh, probably by a computer. Which you know, anything that's selected by a computer is called pseudo random because um, in order for that computer to create the uh, to create those random numbers it needs to use code and that code was created by somebody by a human so it's not truly random but it's close to being random um, another way and we'll be using these random number tables in our class and we'll use them tomorrow actually if you're in my class and I'll show you how to use this random number table and how to go through random numbers here so very important to be able to use that on the AP stats test the second way you could do it is with a calculator. And in uh, the TI Inspire or the uh, TI 84, any TI calculator uses a function called randint. And that's meaning give me a random integer. Um, so use a random int, uh, randint, and it'll give you a random integer from whatever value that you want. Um, and that's not bad, but again, it's pseudo random. So because there's code in your calculator. Uh, another way is to use an online random number generator like random.org. Random.org is a good place that you can just pick a random number between a, 1 and 100 and it'll give you a random number. So any there's various online random number generators. Again, pseudo-random because they're built with code. Um, another way that's pretty simple is to pull slips from back. Like if you were doing a raffle, right? When you get a raffle, raffle tickets, you put them in a hat or in a bowl or something and you shake it all around shake 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 to try to get some um some variation in there and then you grab one out a uh, blindfold or whatever and that's random so that's pretty random you know there are some things in there that could cause it to be biased maybe uh, uh 
maybe the tickets get stuck together or somebody didn't strip them apart. Uh, some things like that kind of happen. That happens with popsicle sticks a lot. If people use popsicle sticks to randomly select, they tend to stick and when you shake them, they tend to only circle around a cup. So you don't, you don't end up picking the same people or you end up picking the same people a lot of times. You'll students you're probably going that's why that person gets called all the time and like, yeah that's why because it doesn't really randomize it doesn't shake it up very good um, the last thing is you could do cards or dice but you have to make sure your probabilities match so if I use um, you know if I use uh, cards and I have 52 cards you know the probability of getting a card is all the same so everybody has the same probability when you're randomizing so you want to make sure that your probabilities match when you do cards and dice. But those are various ways that we can use to randomize. And again, we randomize to reduce that bias. All right, that's all I wanna talk about in this short video, um, ways to randomize and why we do it. Thanks for joining me, bye.